Today I'm doing another dollar store makeover. I'm basically taking stuff from the dollar store and turning them into creepy cute masterpieces. Works of art. Peace de resistance. You get the idea. <laughs> Normally it's a little hard trying to figure out what to customize, but today is a special day. <laughs> because today I actually managed to secure some good stuff. The first thing I picked up to make over is this apron. There were several different colors available, I just picked up the lightest color. The others were a bit darker. There's a few creases. I'm trying to flatten them out with my hands as best as I can. I didn't iron it because I was scared it might melt or something. I don't think it's meant to be ironed. Never know what to expect from the dollar store. <laughs> I bought this soap dispenser from the dollar store sometime back and since day one it's been leaking soap. What the heck dollar store? <laughs> we can all move on. I got some paper towels. The apron is very thin, transparent material. I didn't want anything leaking through and messing up my background. I'm layering up some Mod Podge just to kind of prep the surface. I'm hoping this will make it so that the paint really adheres to the apron and hopefully doesn't seep through. Here's a close up of me applying Mod Podge. Really wanted you guys to see this up close and personal. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. <laughs> I'm sketching out my idea for this piece. I'm thinking about just having one character smack dab in the center, taking up a majority of the apron. It's not a character that you know. It's kinda new, but also not really. Not sure if you can tell yet, but it's supposed to be a cat. A bad-to-the-bone evil cat who cooks. He's a chef. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Posca pens are working on this surface. I wasn't sure if they would pop on the cloth or not, but yeah, they're working pretty well. Also, the pink's going really well with the green apron, so I feel like that was a good color choice. Kinda reminds me of Cosmo and Wanda. This cat might look familiar. It's very similar to the first squishy I ever painted. The same smirk, the same scar, same spoon, same evil vibes. It appears the squishiness is on point. I went with a gray color for that squishy, which in hindsight, I felt wasn't colorful enough. So then I made a pink cat with with the same features, and I had it on my channel banner a long time ago. I loved the cat, but I never really used him anywhere on the channel other than that banner. I decided to paint him this time mostly because I wanted something to do with cooking or food on the apron. I thought about painting the chef pig or the cannibal pig. Apparently all pigs are cannibals. Who knew? He's a good option. I do love him, but for today I decided painting this pink cat instead. He's holding a spoon, so clearly he's been cooking. I added in some blood splatters. Not sure what he's cooking, <laughs> but it sure looks evil. <laughs> One of his ears is like bitten off. The pink cat I originally made didn't have that, but I added it this time around as an homage of sorts to Tootmeister, who also is missing the tip of his ear. <laughs> My poor little Tootsie Poo. When the animal rescue we got him from neutered him, they took another piece of him with him. <laughs> he lost a lot that day. Yeah, he's so happy when you find it. So cute. The pink cat has a little hairdo up top. Not something you normally see out in the wild, but I added that for no reason at all. Gives him some personality. <laughs> I added some shading here and there. I went in and added a bunch of highlights. He's got very sleek fur since he regularly meets his daily water intake requirements. So that's the secret to his beauty. Just drink more water. That's all you need to do to be just as beautiful. I added a little signature at the bottom. Lou. <laughs> Lou. It looks like a U, but it's supposed to be an N. After all that, I still felt like something was missing. He has a particularly large forehead, so I decided to fill in that space with an eyebrow. I felt like that was necessary to make him look more normal. That's what I'm going for with this pink cat. A sense of normalcy. Sniffledorf loves playing with the strings on this apron. I didn't get the footage of it, but he kept playing with them while I was trying to work on this. I sprayed down the whole thing with Mr. Superclear to seal it in. I would have used a normal brush on varnish, but a lot of times it smudges when I'm layering it on, and I didn't want that. So yeah, here it is. My very own customized apron. I think I pull off the look pretty well if I do say so myself. <laughs> the next thing I picked up was a rubber duck. I've customized a rubber duck once before and you guys really wanted to see more. So when I saw some rubber ducks at the dollar store, I had to get them. I took some acetone on a Q-tip to wipe off its face. I didn't really need to get rid of the face since I'm painting over the whole thing anyways, but I guess I just figured it would peek through the paint layers a bit less if it wasn't there to begin with. I'm painting on a white base coat. I want a nice, clean slate to start with. I took it outside and spray painted it too, just to speed up the process a bit. That's why it looks all shiny and nice. I'm painting the face a very light grayish beige. I'm trying to recreate Beetlejuice as a duck. I wasn't sure what color to paint the beak. Beetlejuice doesn't really have a beak, so I just kept it pretty close to the original orange color the duck already had going for him. I have something important to tell you guys. This video is sponsored by... Skillshare!
Skillshare is basically a huge online community where you can pretty much pick up any skill you could ever want to. Skillshare has all kinds of classes. It's perfect for artists and creative people, just like me. Plus, there's no ads, and there's always new premium classes being added. You can just go online and level up your skills without ever leaving your home. Convenient. I like that. Personally, I would like to take this class on entering, entering space. space. An Introduction to Perspective in Procreate by The Art of Mother. Holy Mother of Art, teach me your ways. In my description, there's a link to a one month free trial of Skillshare for the first 1,000 people who click on it. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Back to the dumb duck. I'm painting his wings yellow. Beetlejuice doesn't have any yellow on him, but I'm going for like a duck dressed up as Beetlejuice. Since you know, he's a duck. He's not Beetlejuice. So yeah, he's just dressed up as Beetlejuice for Halloween or something. I don't know. Of course I had to add his iconic black and white striped suit. Before I go over it in black paint, I'm just trying to sketch everything out. I was just kind of eyeballing the stripes. Obviously it's not going to be exact, but it's good enough for me. It's easier to do details in Posca, so that's why I'm doing the stripes in Posca. It was really hard, super painful to paint the stripes on this dumb duck. I'm just doing my best, that's all anyone can ask for. Turned out to not be a good idea to use my Posca because it just ends up cracking. What a mess of things I've made. I tried evening out the stripes. I wanted them to look a little more presentable. Sometimes when I do art, I look at my work and wonder why I decided to start an art channel. <laughs> Why, Why did, did I, I do, do this? this? The whole thing's just a mess. I ended up going over the black stripes with paint to help hide as much cracking as possible. On the dark side, we like to cover our cracks. I'm now working on the face, trying to recreate Beetlejuice's likeness to a T. So I'm adding some nostrils on the beak. That's not for Beetlejuice, that's for the duck. Like I said, Beetlejuice doesn't have a beak. Beetlejuice has purple kind of makeup around his eyes. It's not eyeshadow, I don't think. I don't know what it is. But here's my attempt at incorporating that. I wanted to give him like a sinister look, hence the mad eyebrows. There's some nice thick eyebrows. I think he has like either blue or green eyes. One of those two. I went with green. It's a very Beetlejuice color, so why not? But I think they might be blue, so um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's fine, it's fine. Last thing our little duck dude needs is some hair. Beetlejuice isn't bald. He has some nice voluminous green hair. I didn't really want to sculpt today. Sculpting takes a long, long long time, so you kinda have to have a lot of time on your hands, which I don't. I have a little trick up my sleeve though. Puffy paint. Ta-da! I just globbed some of that stuff all around his head a couple times and let that dry. If you do try to do this method, make sure you don't try and touch the puffy paint for like at least a whole day. That would be a big mistake. <laughs> But yeah, here he is, Duck Beetlejuice. I think he turned out pretty cool. He looks even better next to that other ducky that I customized in that Sheehan video a while back. And the best part is, I think you can tell it's supposed to be Beetlejuice, so that's a plus. Anyways, I also picked up these wooden cube things at the dollar store for my next makeover. I don't know what they're supposed to be. I guess they're supposed to be dice. They came in a pack of three, but I have something very specific in mind for them, so I'm only gonna be using two today. I'll just save the other one for some other time. I started off by painting them all black. The nice thing about using black paint is that it only really takes one or two coats, and then it's pretty much all done. I feel like they're already starting to look a lot less dollar storage now that they're black. I need to sketch out what I'm gonna be doing on these, so I picked out a white colored pencil to help me with that. I'm just going around and adding some drippy looking things, and hopefully you can tell by now that this is going to be a skull on here. It doesn't look perfect, but I'm gonna be going over everything with Posca Pen anyways, so it'll be all cleaned up. I wanted the skulls to be red to kinda pop against the black. They also kinda have to be red to go along with my concept, which I'll discuss later. With the drips, I was going for like that candy apple or chocolate dipped fruit kind of look. I know the colors are a little bit less appetizing and look kind of bloody right now, but hopefully you kind of get the vibe I'm going for when it all comes together in the end. Hopefully. <laughs> On some surfaces, the Posca pen looks kind of streaky. That was definitely the case with these wooden cubes. Luckily for me, they're pretty tiny, so it didn't take too long for me to layer up enough paint to make the streakiness level go down. If you kind of look closely, you can still see a little bit of streakiness though. So yeah, just don't look. I went around with a black Posca pen to touch up the edges a little bit and make everything look a little more crisp and clean. So now that we've got some red and black skull cubes, I'm gonna go in and flesh out some more of the details on these guys. I wanted them to be pretty simple, so they're not gonna be anything crazy. If they were super detailed, then I think it would kind of take away from the concept I have in mind for them. What a cute couple. So cute, in fact, that I'm gonna try and fuse them together forever with some floral wire. How romantic. 
My first attempt was to twist up some floral wire. I thought it may give them like this cool barbed wire kind of look, but nah, it just looked weird. I ended up settling for something a bit simpler and less twisty. This wood is really soft, so I was able to just poke some holes into the top of each cube with one of my sharp clay tools, and then I just used some E6000 to stick the floral wire in there. I don't really like the silver color though. It's clashing with the black and red vibe I've got going on with these guys. I hate it. So I'm painting the floral wire black with some Posca. To top off this wonderful contraption, I pulled out a beautiful, vividly realistic dollar store leaf. So beautiful. While I'm cutting this up, I guess now would be a good time to tell you guys that these are supposed to look like cherries. I don't know how obvious that's been up until this point, but yeah, I figured if you couldn't tell they were cherries yet, then this leaf may help nudge you in that direction. Only problem though is that I tried cutting this leaf and painting it and gluing it on so many different ways, none of them really worked. So I'm just gonna leaf it off. Get it? <laughs> but yeah, this is me telling you guys that these are supposed to be cherries. I hope you can see that even without the leaf accent on there. With a little bit of glossy varnish sprayed on there, I don't think these turned out too bad in the end. I hope you guys liked everything I made today. My favorite favorite would definitely have to be the apron. I've always wanted to try customizing an apron, and I think this one turned out very creepy cute. Subscribe if you would like an ice cream sundae with two bleeding cherry twins on top. Oh my.